What's up my fellow developers and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to actually look into installing popcorn effects. As I mentioned in the previous video, popcorn effects is a real time VFX solution. And since we don't have a native particle editor in the engine as of now, this is instrumental into getting set up for your projects, your prototyping or working on your actual games inside of O3D. The team over there at popcorn FX were gracious enough to provide me links and information for you guys. They're still getting things wrapped up in the official capacity for the engine plugin, but for the most part with the information that I'm going to provide to you today, it will allow you to get up and running as fast as possible. So one of the links that I provided for you guys is a website to the download. As you can see here, we have popcorn effects is available on the open 3D engine. You have a download or a button to click to download the 2.9.7 version of the plugin. According to the team, the plugin version itself will always coincide with the editor version, which is what you need to actually create the effects. I'm going to also provide you guys with a link to the editor. And I will bookmark this because anytime that they release a new version, this is a place you can find it. All right, so the first thing you want to do is actually navigate to your project folder. Now, the team over there stated that they did not test using this with external SDKs or projects. So what I did was actually put my project inside of the engine folder just to make sure everything works. And when they give the go ahead that it works for putting your project externally, or if you want to test it out yourself, you can. But I decided to decide to follow the instructions uh, to the letter. So as you can see here, my project the dev shop right here, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. All right, and the first thing that we're going to do is go into our code folder here. And you see where it says enable underscore gems dot cmake. We're going to right click. We're going to open that in notepad. And I've already said it, but what you want to do is add a entry for popcorn effects. Make sure you do this. This is important. And once you do that, you want to make sure that you save it and close uh, your notepad or your chosen editor. The next thing that you're going to do is actually run CMake on the project folder. So if you're using something like the documentation to create from the command line, if you scroll all the way down and after you've done all this, this line here, we're going to run this, but with an added feature, or should I say an added argument that points to an external subdirectory. So your full line of code should look something like this. Now, once you're finished with that, you want to go back to your project folder, open up your build folder, or it might be your install folder, depending on how you went about creating the engine files. You want to open up your windows underscore VS 2019. You want to scroll all the way down to your visual studio solution. For me, it's the dev shop.sln. Let's go ahead and open that. All right. And once the project is open, you'll see to your right under your solution explorer, a bunch of files pertaining to your project. Now, when we supply the CMake configuration, that argument for the subdirectory for popcorn effects, wherever you put that gem folder, that's where we're going to uh, find that entry. So for us, we actually put it in our actual gems folder. So if we scroll down, we should see popcorn effects. All right, and it has its own set of files. What we want to do is take the actual popcorn effects folder, right click and build. And before we close down the editor, you might run into an error that might cause the solution not to build. It'll be pertaining to like GNV. That's actually leftover code from Lumberyard, which is leftover code um, from CryEngine that is still kind of tied to the plugin. And that's actually going to take place in the scene interface.cpp. Now, how I got there is if we go back to our gems, go back to popcorn effects folder. If we go to our popcorn effects source integration, scene interface, open up the scene interface.cpp, which is what I have open here, you'll be able to find what you need to find. Now, let's scroll down to line uh, about 44, between 43 and, and about 48 comment out this whole block of code. We don't need it. It's going to be removed in the next version anyway. And this is just a shortcut to make sure that it builds for you so you can get using it in the engine right away. All right, so once you're done having that, go ahead and close the solution. 
And once you're in the editor, if everything worked out and you followed the instructions that I laid out for you guys, we were to create an entity, go to add component, scroll down, you should see popcorn effects. And the most important one, at least for now, is going to be the popcorn effects emitter. All right, so the workflow here is for you to open up the popcorn effects editor 2.9. And to show you guys, when you first open up the editor, you're going to be confronted with, well, you're going to have to sign in to your account and you create one for the popcorn effects editor. But once you get past that, you're going to get an option to create a popcorn effects project. So as you can see here, I actually created mine inside of my actual project. That way, when you open the engine, the engine will detect the project and it will show up here. You can see popcorn effects VFX. So make sure you do that. So when you create your effects inside of the editor, which we will go over in another video where you guys can watch the official videos on the popcorn effects uh, YouTube channel. Once you do that, you'll see that in our component, we have a couple of options. Start, restart, kill. That pertains to the emitter that you are working with. To select that, you see particle system here. If I was to go over to our popcorn VFX, as you see, we have a lot of particles here. Now, if I were to pick one of these effects here, uh, we can choose uh, Dr. Strange portal. Let's do that. Put that there. Drag it up just a little bit. See that we have the Dr. Strange portal effect. If I was to rotate this, make it a little bit more, I think it should be. <laughs> there you have it. So yeah, so that is a pretty much cut and dry. Oh, my editor is suffering. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty much a cut and dry way of setting up popcorn effects with the O3D engine. If you guys have a question or comments, let me know down below. Or definitely don't forget to navigate through the Discord to ask your questions. And popcorn effects team also has their own separate Discord if you want more curated help. I didn't get to play around with the particle editor too much in Lumberyard, so I'm going to definitely take advantage of playing with uh, the popcorn effects editor inside of O3D. So look out for curated videos around that, also around gameplay systems that can use this technology because it's a very awesome tool. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As I said before, if you have any questions, comments for me, let me know down below. If you guys want to see any particular tutorial, also let me know down below. Other than that, hope you guys are having a very dope day. Hope you guys are prospering in your projects. And until next time, keep developing.